here. You guys know who I am? D wait, wait, wait. What about DJ? DJ. G. 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 That's it. There's too much to life. You can enjoy life. You know how people think the, uh, the United States is such a bad place? It's not. It's all about your perception about what you make it. You are literally the architect of your destiny. If you don't get yours out of life, that's your fault. I thought I was okay, guys, just smoking a little weed, drinking a little bit, you know, doing a little bit of this. I, you know, I always had a little hustle going on. I always had a little job or something. I thought, man, I met this girl, and, you know, I'm kind of a slick talker. I talked her into going home with me. When we got home, I pulled out a little Coke and said, hey, let's snort a little Coke. She's like, no, don't snort that. You're messing it up. I was like, messing it up? What are you talking about? So she's like, let me show you. She went to the, to the kitchen, pulled out a pot. True. You know what I'm saying? Asked for some baking soda and some other yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she started cooking. The man. Yeah, let me tell you, dude. But let me tell you, when I put that pipe in my mouth the second time, Whoa. it like everything Whoa. in the world. I, it, I can imagine that moment. It's like everything in my life was swirling around. In that bowl. And a whip. <laughs> and I sucked it in and I blew it out. Man, I, now, I never you saw it again out. for seven years. I started yeah. smoking crack. And I smoked crack from 21 to 27. <laughs> <laughs> you having a crack <laughs> crack, <laughs> right? Don't it, nah. You like missed it. the part where we were cooking. You, you missed like that it. part. You like his laugh Check it out. Okay. So I started smoking crack. I smoked crack for 70 years. <laughs> Y'all know what a real J look like, right? Yeah, a real J. Dude, I was a J, dog. A J. By that time, <laughs> by that time for real. Hey, I was 98 pounds. I weigh 174 pounds right now. Can you imagine me at 98 pounds? You know, like, eyes all in. You know, Ooh, you know what I'm saying? Like I like, took my 10X pills or something. What? You know, I'm 10. I'm 10. Well, you're you're people keep putting up with what you're doing. Yeah. They can love you to death, dude. I'm telling you. Because I knew your mom was gone. It was over. It's over. Anybody got a mom like that? Oh, yeah. Dude, let me tell you something. And this is, ain't got nothing to do with this program. It ain't got nothing to do with who asked me to come here. I'm telling you, once she gone, she will not be replaced. Nobody going to put up with you. But she could be part of the problem too. And I hate to say How old that. Are? I was 27. When she died. When she died. It was just me and my mom. I had three older sisters, no brother. <laughs> Everybody was gone. It was just me, the crackhead. Crackhead? <laughs> <laughs> I was a crackhead. Oh, okay. With a capital K. The crackhead. Red <laughs> bought me a bottle of wild Irish rose. Ooh. Y'all know what that is? Wild Irish Rose, wow. MD 2020. You know, I, look, I didn't drink MD 2020 and Wild Irish Rose because I liked it. I drank it because the bottle was flat and it was easy to steal. You know what I'm talking about? That flat bottle. You can go in there and put that in your pants and in your sock and nobody should literally broke in jail one time. And then you finish oh, you, you, up. You duck. How you break your jail? I ran in behind the paddy wagon. I'm telling you. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, I had to go on you. Hey, at that time it was. It rough. But let, let, let me tell you what happened. When I, was, when I was in treatment the last time, a movie came on, a doc documentary about Malcolm X. How many people know Malcolm? Okay. I saw the documentary, and it changed my life. It didn't make me a militant black man that want to go kill white women. Okay, that wasn't the point. The point is the transitional phase he went through, how he changed. Then I'm sitting there, there's four guys sitting at the table playing cards. We're in treatment now. This is my 15th time in treatment. I'm in a jail school time. I'm tired. You know, I was so happy to have a clean bed. One time I went to the um, Salvation Army, right? And they gave me a bed. And when I got there, the sheets was clean. So I got in the bed, and I was so tired, man. I hadn't slept in like three days, hadn't ate. I just needed to sleep and rest. But then when I got in the bed, it felt a little damp. Then I put the cover over my head, I could smell it. Whoever had slept there the night before had peed in the bed. Uh. And the mattress had gotten dry. But I was so tired, 
I didn't get up. You slept in that pee? I good. slept in that pee, though. Oh, I was tired. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All kind of things happened. But that experience with Malcolm changed me. Because I realized, dude, if I was going to get better, it was going to take me. And I knew if other people could get better, so could I. So you know what I did? I got up from that table. Because there was four guys sitting there. One of them was talking about he's about to lose his job. He's got her up and get out of treatment. One said his girl was going to leave him, so he had her up and go. One was talking about um, his car about to get repossessed. Guys, I wasn't in a hurry. I had literally been to hell. You know what I mean? And I wasn't in a hurry. I was so glad to have a clean bed that was dry. You know, so I got up, went back to the room, and I grabbed the Bible, and I started to read. Guess what, guys? I couldn't read. I was totally illiterate. I couldn't read at all. I was, I was 27. So how you started to read? Like Malcolm. You know how Malcolm, he did, never graduated high school. You know how he got educated? He grabbed the Bible. He wrote, he wrote one word down, and he got a dictionary. He wrote the word down and wrote the definition of the word. He started teaching himself. And that's what I said. 70%. Uh, wait, let me tell you how it's designed for it not to work for you. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm trying to tell you. <clears throat> all right? 70% of all black men drop out of high school. Right? It's crazy. You are the smartest ones on the planet, dude. You know why? They cannot survive in your environment. Think about it, if they put the mayor on Duncan Block. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you stay right around the corner now. Oh, yeah, Come on now. Yeah. You know what I mean. Come yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, put him down there in the bucket. You know, but we survive. But we're missing one important element, the educational piece. You got to be educated on both levels. You know who else missing? You. They making decisions about your life. I'm not going to let them make decisions about mine. Yeah. You feel me? But you got to learn how to play the game. You know, because think about it. When you you didn't know, she said George Willis. Y'all like, who the heck is George Willis? You, you feeling like, oh, here we go. G. But when I said I was G money, it changed the whole scenario, right? Yeah. But I'm telling you guys. You guys are the most valuable people on the planet because you already got the street. All you got to do is get the book knowledge to put with it. To get the grade. Yeah. And they cannot stop you, dude. They can't stop me. You know, your story will be one of your greatest assets. So don't close the door on your past. Don't shut your friends and the people in your community out. But just let go of the stupidness. You know the people that's stupid. Yeah. Quit going to jail. For what? Stupid fool. They lock you up and take your freedom. Because they will.